This was my third film with um, RWF. Um, and I was surprised that he hired me again because um, our relation on our first film, Whitey, was pretty bad. I was not the DP he wanted. I did a lot of television and he called me sometimes the TV Heine, the guy who did all the TV movies. And I believed in the beginning that I would never make it through this movie. But after a while, that changed a little bit because I liked his ideas and he felt that I do really understand his ideas and make them work. And then the second one was so-so. Then I thought, okay, that was it. But then again, phone was ringing and he wanted me to do this one. And uh, I liked the script very much. But when I saw the set and then we shot the whole movie in one single room, that was a challenge, so uh, it couldn't move much, and uh, I love to move the camera, for sure, as everybody knows. <laughs> the room was long, but it didn't have a lot of depth. It was maybe like 12 feet deep, and the main room opposite the window was a blank wall where the bed was, and it was sure that we couldn't move any walls. It was absolutely impossible. It was stone walls. So it was very limiting. We shot the movies um, in 10 days, and basically we shot it in 100 hours, because Margaret Carstensen was on stage in Bremen, and she had to leave at uh, the latest at 6 o'clock at night, um, and she came back on the next morning at 9. For Margaret, it was fantastic how she managed it without getting tired, without getting unconcentrated. That was really, really hard for her. And the reason why we shot the movie in Morbs Radio was basically because it was very near to Bremen and we found this house, which Fassbinder liked. Um, I wished, I would have, would have wished that would have been a little bigger, but he thought, no, that was okay, it was all right. It was. It was her house and it, was, it fitted to the story. Fassbinder had the ability to be very fast in deciding what he wanted, but he was not so good in preparing what he wanted to do. So his ideas came on the day, but he was not a guy who made like a list of shots that you have to do. We didn't do a lot of multiple takes because um, when the take was good, he was happy. We shot not more than three takes on every scene. It was a little different when we talked about the lighting for the actresses, because I, he told me in the beginning that he was a big fan of Douglas Sirk. So it was the melancholy and uh, the look of Hollywood films. Um, so he wanted it to look really like rich, Hollywood film. To do that in a, such a small environment was not easy, but I tried my best to do it because I loved Hollywood films also, and I have saw a lot of Douglas Sirk's films before, so I had a feeling for the style of his lighting. The shot where we had a problem was a panning shot. It was Irm Herman, and then we had to pan over to Margit, and he wanted a special uh, framing for that. It was a very long shot and also a move. We rehearsed it a couple of times, and then um, he asked me, did, did you get it? And I said, no, I didn't get exactly the way you designed it, but the framing was okay. And then he was mad at me and said, um, if I tell you this is the frame, then you should get this shot and, uh, and not something else. And um, I was mad at him because I said, um, I have my own timing also for this shot. So when I feel it, that this is the right timing for it, and I don't reach the exact position, but still the framing is okay, then it's my way to do it. You know, I'm not a machine, and if you don't like that, then hire somebody else, and I walked away. And uh, it was, we had a big discussion about it. And then, you know, I was outside and then they, 
the assistant came and said, okay, let's talk about it and so on. But um, I think it was the right time to talk about my own feelings when I moved the cameras. And from that moment on, he acted a little different with me. He didn't treat me like somebody who had exactly to fulfill what he wanted, but I had my own feelings about it. The relation between the director and the cinematographer um, depends on the character of the two of them. Uh, if you have a director who has a very strong vision, like with Fassbinder or with Scorsese, and he wants to decide on every shot, but you can always have a, another relationship with a, a director who is not a very visual person, so that you can have your own fantasy and decide on your own how you would shoot a movie. Both ways work if there is not a big ego in the game. But if you have little money and little time, and you know where the images come together, that's a great help. His unique quality was that he could think in terms of images, and that was very special.